Oh, hi there. Welcome to the mountain hut. Look at that. There's icicles on the roof. In this episode of Cooking with Alex, we're gonna do some barbecuing. Now, I've done quite a lot of grilling in the past, like high heat, grilling a steak or grilling vegetables, but I've never done a really slow smoked barbecue. Have you ever had Texas barbecue, that, that pulled pork which just falls apart? We're gonna do that. We're gonna try and do that. It's about 7.30, 8 in the morning, and I'm up early because this is gonna take, I think, most of the day. I've never done this before, but we're gonna get this thing lit and start cooking. Before I get the barbecue outside going, I want to get this house warm. And also, I want to use some of the coals from this to start the barbecue. Every morning, I have to wake up and light this fire. If I don't, I get cold. Luckily, it's pretty simple. I just put in a fire lighter, some pieces of this sawdust pelleted wood, and then the fire is up and running. And while I let that heat up, I think I'm going to have a shower. Gonna shave my disgusting looking moustache off. Oh yeah, I feel brand new. Then we'll get the barbecue heated up and plan for today's cook. Now bear with me for this one because I don't have a clue what I'm doing. I've taken some hot coals, put them in one corner of the barbecue. And then because this cook isn't going to be a hot and fast one, it's going to be a long cook, I need this thing to stay heated for, I don't know, maybe up to 10 hours. Now of course you could open the lid and keep adding fuel as and when you need it, but every time you open it up, heat gets out and then you end up not actually cooking. So I want to leave this thing closed as much as possible. So what I've done is something called, uh, I believe barbecuers call it the snake method. Normally people do it in a round barbecue. They lay the coals in a circle around the outside. So it burns slowly throughout the day. This barbecue is a little bit different, but I have still used the same sort of method where the coals are going around the outside of the barbecue. And so they're not all gonna burn at the same time. It's gonna start off on the left and then it's gonna slowly work its way around the edge Hopefully it will last a good few hours. If it does end up running out, then I can add some more fuel as well. This thing's already heating up. I can tell because all the snow is melted on the outside. While this thing gets up to a good temperature, I'm gonna go inside and make a bit more of a plan for today's cook. Now planning is something which I've never been good at. I have always made a plan, but never stuck to it. But today we're gonna to try our best to set out an aim, a goal, and then we're gonna try and get there. So, what is the menu gonna be? It's actually quite fun writing a menu. When I was traveling in the Netherlands, I met up with uh, some top chefs in a really cool restaurant called Hausje James. And once we had collected all the ingredients that day, we foraged mushrooms, we went into the veg garden, picked some vegetables, went to the butcher, caught a fish. After we'd done all that, what the guys did in the restaurant was sit down with a piece of paper, they made a plan, they made a menu of what they were gonna cook. Cause you wanna go into the kitchen with at least a, a, a slight plan. Yesterday, I went to the butchers and I got myself a chunk of pork shoulder. Now pork shoulder, I've learned, has quite a lot of connective tissue and can be a very chewy piece of meat. Unless you slow cook it with low temperatures and apparently, eventually, the connective tissue breaks down and you can create pulled pork, which is like a very soft, very easy to chew meat. My plan for the pork shoulder is to put it on that grill. I've seen people cook pork shoulder for like 10 hours, six hours. I don't know exactly how long it's gonna take. We wanna cook it long enough so it just falls apart. So the pork shoulder, we're gonna slow cook. From what I have read, barbecuers like to cook pulled pork between 225 Fahrenheit and 250 Fahrenheit, which is 107 Celsius to 121 Celsius. So the temperatures are reasonably low. Now I can't just have pulled pork on a plate and nothing else. I got some really good looking bread from the bakery yesterday. So I think I'm gonna have a piece of bread with the pulled pork on top. And then because the pulled pork is probably gonna be quite fatty, I want something to cut through it. And I think I've got some gherkins in the fridge. So I'm gonna have slice up some gherkins, place them on top. And also I've got some barbecue sauce. And then I'm, the pulled pork will be perfect for sandwiches for the next few days. It's gonna look like this, it's gonna be a piece of bread, pulled pork on top, slices of gherkins, 
Doesn't that look beautiful? So bad. It'll look better than that, I promise. So last night before I went to bed, I salted the pork with a big piece of meat like that. If you just salt it straight before you cook, then I guess the, the salt isn't really gonna, it's gonna be on the outside, but it's not gonna go in. And apparently when salt goes into meat, it helps break down the muscle fibers and stuff like that. Something scientific happens. I think the, the process of salt going from a high concentration zone to a low concentration zone is called osmosis. Over time, during the night, the salt would have gone from the outside and slowly seeped in, so that when we pull that pork apart, there will be salt over all of it, not just on the outside. And now I'm going to add some, I'm gonna add some mustard, like slather some mustard around the outside. I've seen barbecue people do that. And then use some pepper on the outside to give it some flavor. Temperatures are quite important with this kind of cooking because if you have the cooker too hot, you can burn or overcook the meat. If you have the cooker too cold, it will take forever. And it's not only the temperature of the barbecue which matters, it's the internal temperature of the meat. Now apparently pork is safe to eat when the internal temperature reaches around 165 degrees Fahrenheit. But that doesn't mean it's the best temperature to pull it off the heat. Now apparently with pulled pork, you want the internal temperature to be around 200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 93 degrees C. To help me know the temperature of the grill and also know the temperature of the inside of the pork, I've got this wireless thermometer. I poke it into the meat, into the thickest part. There's two temperature gauges on there, one for the outside, which will tell me the ambient temperatures of the grill, and then the probe on the inside of the meat, which will tell me the temperatures on the inside. So I can link that out with my phone and I can get an idea of the temperatures and how things are cooking. So I can currently see that the internal temp is five degrees. That'll be because it's been sat in the fridge all night. And the ambient temperature, which is the outside, is 19 degrees. Oh yeah, it's getting warm now. The coals have started here and they will slowly make their way around the edge. I'm gonna place a water container in the bottom underneath where I'm gonna cook the food. Apparently you want some kind of water in there to be evaporating and causing steam to stop everything from drying out. Water container, that's gonna go in here. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error today. We're gonna to learn together at how not to cook barbecue. I've got the grate, that's gonna go on here. It's cooking, it's cooking in there. We got, we got, we got a slow smoked pulled pork for the first time. I mean, it might turn out terrible, but it also might turn out good. We're barbecuing in the snow. Ambient temperature is currently 78 degrees and rising. And the way I plan to control the temperature is with these two airflow vents. If I want to cool down the barbecue, I can close the vents to shut off the oxygen. If I want to heat it up, I open them. You can't see anything out there, it's just, Missed. I'm gonna put a stopwatch on to see how long things take because apparently I've seen other people do this and it takes six to 10 hours. So now what do we do? I guess I'll keep an eye on the temperature and fiddle about with these vents to uh, keep it under control. We were looking to keep it around 109 to 121 degrees C. I think I'm gonna go inside, have some breakfast. Daily chores in the hut, getting water, I'm heating it up. The temperatures were getting too hot. It was around 125 or something. And I wanted to cool it down a bit, so I shut off the air vents. And I managed to level it out at around 115 degrees. That's the ambient. And the internal temperature is rising, which is good. Technology, eh? This is flipping nuts. I can see how my food is cooking out there. Yum. I thought I might as well check out the bread that I've got for tonight and have a slice or two for breakfast. Nice looking piece of bread, eh? I'm trying to be more Austrian while I'm here. So I got some sausage, some more sausage and some cheese. I went to the supermarket yesterday and I looked at all the cheese and I filled my basket up with like six different types of Austrian cheeses. At which point I realized that I was definitely never gonna be able to carry all that cheese up this massive hill. And this hill 
is hard enough just to walk up without anything, but if you've got a rucksack full of cheese, it's really tricky. So I just settled for a block of Gouda cheese instead. I'm just letting you know that's why I haven't got some real nice Austrian cheese here. Tiroler Landjaga sausage. Das ist Bienenhonig aus England. I think I just said this is bee honey from England. 91? What's happened? The temperature's just dropped loads outside. I thought I had it level and then I realised I got distracted with the food and then it dropped to 91 degrees. I want it to go up to at least 110. It's a fun game anyway, trying to keep the temperatures stable. Honey, piece of cheese. Salami, fold it up and then shove it in my mouth. Mm. Up here in the mountains, some days you have an incredible view and other days you have no view. Like today, I can hardly see the trees in front of the hut. It's so misty. We are in the middle of a cloud. If you were down in the valley and you looked up, you would see a cloud and I'm in the middle of that cloud. Now I've got a few hours to kill. What do I do with my time while I wait for the meat to smoke and cook? Every time I look out that window and I see the steep slope covered in snow, I keep saying to myself, I need to slide down that. I need to sledge down that really fast. But the thing is, I don't have a sledge. I don't have a toboggan or anything to actually go down the hill on. So we're gonna get creative. We're gonna look around the hut and try and find something to, to slide down that hill on. Could it be the chopping board? Could I use a towel? No, there's gonna be too much friction. It needs to be a smooth thing. Maybe I could sit on the frying pan. You know, the bottom of the frying pan has got a really nice soft finish. I just can't, I don't think I'd fit in that. Although I have heard that woks are pretty good for sledging. There's actually a wok world cup where people slide down hills on woks. I think what I'm looking for is in here. Bin bag. I don't, I don't fit inside it. Maybe I just have to sit on it like that and then slide. Woohoo! I'm excited for this. Shall we do it? If you clicked on this to learn how to make pulled pork on a barbecue, then you're in the wrong place. So get out of here. Today we're barbecuing pulled pork and also sledging down a hill on a bag. Let's go. Let's, go. let's do this. <laughs> this is it. The moment I've been waiting for. We're doing it. We're sledging down the hill on a bag. Really steep as well. So we're gonna get up some good speed, I reckon. It's a little bit bumpy though, nearly up the trees. Let's go. <laughs> oh, whoa. Ah, jeez, that was painful. <laughs> I felt like I was in a car crash. <laughs> Wasn't ready for that. Ripped a hole in it. I'm covered in cow poo, but that was fun. I think I need to get like a proper sledge or something to slide more stably on. Mmm, smells nice. The temperatures have really dropped down to like 80 degrees, which isn't good because it won't finish cooking at 80 degrees. It needs to be hotter. I've got both the air vents open, so I'm like, what, what else do I do? So I'm gonna have a quick look inside and maybe fiddle about with the coals and try and work out how to get this thing a little bit hotter. I'm realizing very quickly that the art of barbecuing is a harder one to do than I had previously thought. Currently, you could say I am failing. I kind of got an understanding of what I need to do, I need to slowly burn those coals for the next five or six hours until the pork has finished cooking. But I don't exactly know how to do that. Anyway, I opened everything up, got the coals burning properly again. I'm gonna shut it down and then hopefully, fingers crossed, it stays hot this time. It's mad how much time each day is spent towards just getting the house warm.
So the internal temperature has reached about 70 degrees C. And the color on the outside looks pretty good. It certainly doesn't feel like it's gonna just break apart just yet. From what I understand, for the first part of the cook, you want it unwrapped. So the flavor from the, the fire goes onto the meat and then you wrap it up and then that traps all the moisture inside and then cooks it, the finishing bit. So I've got some foil. Bold, 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 bold. So we're gonna leave that to finish off cooking and while we wait, I'm gonna go for a little walk in the woods because the other day I set up a trail camera on a tree and I left it there for a couple of days and I got a shot of a deer and also a badger. Anyway, I replaced the camera on a different area to see what other footage I could get. And we're gonna go and check that now. Goodbye. It looks spooky in here. Well, that's a bit disappointing. We got zilch. This looks like a good place because there's these paths which look like animal tracks. I guess I will turn it back on and leave it for another week. On. Oh, oh dear. It's very quiet today. I'm in the middle of a cloud. Visibility is less than 50 meters. Let's go and check on my pork. So I've been sat here pretending to be busy. In reality, I've just been watching YouTube videos and listening to music. I've also done a bit of research and apparently when the internal temperatures reach around 95 to 100 degrees. That is where the collagen in the connective tissue turns into gelatin. That is a process of the chewy connective tissue turning into a liquid. So I believe when that happens, that's when it becomes juicy, moist and pull apart texture. It's all very scientific when you start looking deeper into it and all the temperatures and techniques you use are all based on like science. There's a reason for it all. It's not just shove it in the oven and wait until you're hungry. It's quite funny, on the app where I'm keeping track of the temperature, I can see a graph since I started the cook this morning and it's just completely up and down. It looks dreadful. Now ideally you want it to be consistent, but mine has gone from being way too cold to way too hot to way too cold to way too hot. It's really tricky keeping the temperature stable, but we're getting there now. Uh, internal temp is at 88 degrees, so we're about 10 degrees away. And the ambient temperature has been consistently sitting around 110, which is, which is nice. I think we're done. One degree off the apparent perfect temperature, but let's check it out. Here we go, here we go. Ah, it's hot. Well, well, well. It's got beautiful color. It's got a really amazing smell. I don't really know. It feels like it's not really gonna just fall apart. <laughs> Doing anything for the first time is tricky, so I'm not gonna be mad if it doesn't taste amazing. We got some bread. It's now December, which means it's nearly Christmas, right? I just opened up this beautiful candle that I got from Gwen and Griffid Bee Farm in Wales. Happy Christmas, everyone. How beautiful. Oh, yeah. Cheers. Zip for Austrian beer. Ah, so good. I've been cooking this thing for six hours. 
And it just pulls apart. Just with it is just as easy as that with the fork. It just pulls apart. It's so tough. Oh no, it's a bit more tender at the bottom. I definitely messed it up. That's for sure. I mean, it smells amazing. It's definitely cooked. Some parts of this were really easy to break. Some parts were very tough. Anyway, let's have a little taste. It's gone this really beautiful, like, red colour. That was pretty good. Oh, the smokiness is amazing. I'm not going to be too harsh on myself. Today I decided that I wanted to cook pulled pork, and I pulled it apart. And it's pork, so, I mean, I did what I set out to do. The fact that it didn't really pull apart very easily is a different matter. It tastes blooming good. Of course, you put that next to a pro barbecue maker's pulled pork and this would seem pretty terrible, but luckily I haven't got that comparison to make. We're gonna make a pulled pork bread tower. We got some barbecue sauce. This is gonna be my food for the next like four or five days. Gherkins along the top. How am I going to fit this in my mouth? Yeah, I approve. And that's all that matters. There's only no master chef. If 10 is the best thing I've ever eaten, and one is a burnt pizza, this sits at a solid four. I know this could be so much better. When I was in Texas about four or five years ago, I had Texas barbecue and it was incredible. And this is so far away from that. But it's still got the smoky taste from the fire. It's got nice flavor from the pepper. And when combined with the bread with the gherkins, it's actually a proper meal. What have I learned from today's cooking escapade? As soon as you're working with live fire, things get like twice as hard. You need to constantly keep an eye on it and constantly keep adjusting and making sure that it stays at the right temperature. Otherwise, you get what happened to me where the temperatures are just rocketing and then falling and then going back up and down. And I don't think that's a good thing. Barbecuing is a proper skill. It's a skill that I haven't got, but it's a skill that I want to have. I want to get this pulled pork down, but I guess it's like everything. It takes practice. You have to do it many, many times before you understand it fully. And although I know, I realize this video didn't teach you how to cook uh, barbecue, I hope that you can maybe relate to this experience today. It, it, it goes for everything you do for the first time. It normally goes terribly wrong, but you've got to start somewhere. I remember the first time I went bouldering, like an indoor gym where you have to climb up a wall. And I was there trying to climb up this wall, trying to take this route and, I, and just completely failing. I was so self-conscious. I was thinking, what are all these other like pro climbers thinking of me? I must look like a fool. But I went climbing a lot and I slowly got a bit better and I ended up like not feeling like a fool and then I could look at the beginners and laugh at them. <laughs> it's a funny thing learning new skills. It's a big up and down and up and down. It's very rewarding at times but also very disappointing at times and it's often very hard to get past the first stage in learning a new skill. You try something for the first time you're bound to fail because it's the first time you've tried it and then you give up because you failed and failing isn't fun, it's not nice. But if you want to get good at something, you, you, you have to fail. You have to fail many times and you will continue to fail forever. Maybe just a bit less as you go along. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm going to eat some more of this semi-decent pulled barbecue pork. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Cheerio, have a good one. Merry Christmas.